Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Jack Connect 2021 Startup Booster. Now, here's the thing. If you were with me and with us all this morning from uh, 10 to about 11.30, you would have, I'm sure, enjoyed the many innovative ideas, big ideas that we heard. And the jury members asked the questions, dug a little bit deeper and found out more about these wonderful ideas. So if you've enjoyed that, you're going to enjoy this next hour together with us right now now and if you weren't with us this morning let me just quickly explain what this is simply essentially all about so startup booster competition this is really the startup competition within the the compos composites industry this is the competition all startups really want to be a part of so from 2017 when it first launched we've seen the emergence of more than 500 different big ideas, innovative ideas that have uh, popped up pretty much around the world. And this, this network is pushing those ideas forward even as we speak. And this edition, this edition no less, has, in, has uh, 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 an application of more than 200 different ideas. What we did, we basically, Jack, teams from Jack, Daimler, Airbus and Magna together sat down and chose 20 just 20 out of 200, 20 of those best exciting startups. 10 of them we heard this morning and 10 we're going to hear right now. We're going to hear right now. They have simply three minutes, no more, three minutes to share their ideas. And then after that, two minutes from the jury members to dig a little bit deeper underneath the bonnet to find out really what makes these startups tick. Now, probably at this stage, you're thinking, what... What on earth is the prize? What do they walk away with as winners of this competition? We're looking for three winners, three equal winners of the competition, and each of them will receive 3,500 euros in a, a financial prize and a fully equipped booth at Jack World 20. 22 right here in Paris next year, which uh, naturally gives them lots of exposure and maybe more importantly, a chance to have the conversations they need with the right people at the right time at Jet World next year to really move forward in the right direction. And again, this is a competition that would not be possible at all without the support, without the loyal, faithful support of our innovation partners, Airbus, Daimler, and for this year as well, Magna, uh, and equally our recruitment, recruitment partners as well, who really help spread the word in terms of the competition and getting as, as, as uh, many as applications as we can, which is literally 200, more than 200 across 30 different countries. Right, I think it's time to introduce or reintroduce the jury members. Those of you that are with us, you'll know who these uh, uh, jury members are. If you weren't with us, let me quickly just remind you exactly who we have. So, first of all, we have the head of manufacturing technologies of, of Composite at Airbus, Yelly Blumhoff. Yelly, are you with us? Hello. <laughs> yeah, Len, nice to see you again. It, it was, a, it was a, a busy morning and I'm sure you, it's already overloaded with great ideas. Well, guess what? You're, gonna, you're about to hear another 10 great ideas as well. So welcome back. We also have Thomas Canova, head of Solvay Ventures from Solvay, obviously. Thomas, are you with us? Yes, I'm with you. Great. I can hear you. I can't, I, we can't actually see you. Are you, are you visually, can we see, wonderful. You, you look even better when, when we see you. Right. Thomas, back again. Looking forward to hearing your comments and questions for our um, uh, pictures as well. We also have a, uh, a gentleman that we see year on, year out supporting the, uh, the Startup Booster. And naturally, we see him many, many times uh, at, uh, in Paris for Jet World as well. The head, uh, sorry, manager of uh, Future Outsider Materials at Daimler, Carl Heinz Fuller. Carl Heinz, are you there? Wonderful. Hello, together. Wonderful. Nice to see you back. And again, looking forward to your uh, comments and uh, your uh, um, what you think of the uh, the uh, big ideas as well. We also have a gentleman who's joining us right now for the uh, for the uh, for the for the jury. Global Director of Innovation at Magna Exteriors, Brian Krull. Brian, you with us? I'm here. Thank you, Peter. Fantastic. Perfect. Just a quick Great. question for you, Brian. Um, you weren't with us this morning. 
you haven't seen the startups. You're about to see 10 new ones right now. If there was something that you are looking for that makes you go, that makes you, that says to you, yes, this is something I need to follow. I need to, I need to be more curious about. What would it be? You know, really advancing uh, startups is something that we look to do at Magna. Uh, big history of that internally at the company. As I look to the future, it's it's really cost sustainable, sustainable approaches to innovation uh, that we can bring to our customers and ultimately the startups bring to us. So really excited to be a part of the uh, Startup Booster today. Fantastic. And we also have Managing Director of BS, BASF Venture Capital, Marcus Solibieda. Marcus, you're with us once again. Yes, hello. Hi. Hello, right. Re okay, relaxed. He's cool. He's in his chair. He's ready to hear these, these next 10 great ideas. So thank you very much, jury members. And uh, all that really leaves me now to say is it's time to move on to our big ideas. Again, 10 big ideas. We're looking for three, three from 10 this morning and um, from, from the 10 this afternoon. So after this uh, hour together, this evening at some stage, we will know, well, the jury members will know, and here at Jack, uh, um, the staff, uh, the team here, we will know. But tomorrow afternoon at 2.30, we'll be able to share during the award ceremony who those lucky three, I always say lucky, it's actually well-deserved, well-deserved three uh, winners will actually be. Right, let's move on to our first finalist of this section. So, we move on to... The first finalist, which is actually the winner of the Startup Booster uh, at Jack Forum Chicago, uh, Continuous Composites, uh, and the CEO of Continuous Composites, Tyler Alvarado. Tyler, are you with us? Yes, sir, I am, Peter. Absolutely. I reckon I remember you very well. We met a few years ago when you, when you won, the, uh, won the title. You're, here, you're finally here. We're not here physically, but you're here through the screen. Are you ready to impress who you have to impress? Absolutely. I'm okay, ready. wonderful. Three minutes over to you. Thank you, Peter. At Continuous Composites, we are introducing the next generation of composites manufacturing. Composites are a superior material from a strength to weight ratio. They have a low CTE and they're non corrosive. The downside to composite materials, though, is the traditional manufacturing processes. Most of them are very manual and labor intensive. They require expensive tooling and autoclaves and ovens, which ultimately drive up the finished composite part and limit its applications to very high end applications like aerospace defense uh, and high end premium products. At Continuous Composites, we are introducing the next generation of composites manufacturing. Some of the recent innovations in this space has been automated fiber placement and automated tape laying, which removes the dependency of skilled labor and increases the material consumption, 3D printing of composite tooling, and vacuum-assisted resin transfer molding. But these are all incremental improvements to the traditional techniques of manufacturing composites. Here at Continuous Composites, we have patented and are developing our Continuous Fiber 3D Printing Technology, or CF3D for short. This is a fundamental shift in the way you manufacture composites. It leverages composite materials, additive manufacturing, and robotics, and it eliminates the costly constraints of all the traditional processes. This is true continuous fiber 3D printing at very high fiber volume fractions at very low porosity. And this technology offers a very diverse range of life of resins and fibers to match your materials for the specific application. This technology leverages snap curing thermal set resins to dynamically steer fibers in all three dimensions and is not only limited to structural composites, but can also be used for very high temperature composites like carbon bonded carbon or ceramic matrix composite parts. <clears throat> At Continuous Composites, the result of this technology is a fully automated process that has a very high material yield. You can manufacture very complex organic geometries at the click of a mouse. The result is a very low, low cost composite manufacturing process. Behind this technology is a very extensive patent portfolio, both US and domestic, covering the process, hardware, software, materials, and beyond. Our team is comprised of over 30 professionals ranging from engineering, business, intellectual property that's very well suited for bringing this technology to market. Our business model is to offer one solution, which is comprised of both the motion platform print heads, 
the toolpath generation software and a very robust supply chain of materials providing access to this technology. And we're very focused on bringing our production system to market, which is a six axis industrial robot arm targeted across the US and Europe over the next 12 months. This technology and industry is growing rapidly as a result of very high performance materials like this being offered. And we are bringing this technology to market. We're work, working with customers right now on funded projects and strategic uh, early adopters of the technology, and we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much Tyler. for your time, and I look forward to questions. Oh, wonderful. I just had to stop you there just a few seconds, but you did it. You actually did it in time, so wonderful. Thank you so much. Right, let's hear from our jury members and hear how they felt about what they just heard. And I think Thomas has got a first question ready, all ready for you, Tyler. Yeah, so thanks a lot, Tyler, for your pitch. So my question is on partnerships. So if we look at the value chain, at, at the upstream section of your value chain, so how critical is for you to develop strategic partnerships on developing new materials? It's very important. Our, our innovation really is a materials innovation. Uh, we have partnered with Arkema. Um, and their subsidiary Sardomer, we have a joint development agreement where we're developing this diverse library of resins for our process. And they're also an investor in continuous composites. We also have a partnership with St. Cobain on the development of this for aerospace applications, as well as on their fiber division. Um, and we're always looking for additional partners. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Anybody else from, uh, from the jury? I'm not quite sure what that question was, but it, it, it's, it, it didn't sound, it sounded like a very high voiced, uh, can we, maybe you can do that again, maybe Yellow, once again, ask the question. Yeah, it's okay. If you can hear her, and you, you, you probably don't know why we're laughing, but the, the voice coming through, the sound, is very much like a Smurf. Um, I know you don't sound like a Smurf, but, but it does sound like it, and that's why we're smiling, and we can't hear the question. Maybe once again, try again? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Okay, what we'll do, <laughs> we'll, we'll stop there, and... Um, okay. Right, you we'll stop there. Okay, any other questions from somebody else, maybe with a lower voice? Yeah, yeah I, maybe I, I have a question. Okay. Is it possible? <laughs> Does it work? But please okay. go ahead. No. Uh, just to understand, is it, um, is it, are you, in terms of um, uh, uh, the materials you use, is it, uh, is it a combined system, your hardware and the material, or is it an open system where you say you have the hardware and you are open to uh, a different set of materials. <clears throat> yeah, so the uh, fibers that we use are typically off the shelf continuous fibers. So, uh, you know, any carbon fiber manufacturer or glass fiber we can leverage. The resin systems are a, um, you know, developed resin system that are specific for our process that work with the continuous fibers that the customers uh, choosing. We currently have about 12 different resins available and that library of resins is continuing to grow. Um, we've developed those a lot of times through customer driven objectives when they're okay. specifying smoke fire toxicity requirements or the glass transition temperature, for example, of the resin. Um, so the resin systems aren't necessarily just off the shelf, uh, but there is the ability to tailor the resins and the materials for specific applications. Wonderful. Okay, what we'll do then, we'll stop there with the, uh, the questions. Tyler, thank you so much. Um, good luck. Thanks. And we'll, we'll only find out tomorrow during the award ceremony if, uh, well, you might find out before that, hopefully, but we, everyone else uh, hopefully will, might, might see you in the final tomorrow. Thank you so much. Sounds good. Thank you, Peter. Wonderful. Appreciate all you guys. Bye-bye. Oh, by the way, are you still there? Where, where? Oh, you've gone. Um, Yele, if you're still there, if we'll ask you to reconnect, if you can reconnect and hopefully we'll get, uh, we'll get your normal voice back, back to where yeah, it is should it be. Better now because I did reconnect now. Is it better? That's is much better? better. Is that Yele? Oh, wonderful. Okay. Good. Beautiful. You sound beautiful. Wonderful. Okay. <laughs> Let's move on. We move on now to our next finalist, second finalist of the uh, of this second section, and uh, we move across 
to, we stay in the US in fact, and uh, we're going to listen to Endeavour Composites, the president of Endeavour Composites, which is Hicham Goshen. Hicham, are you with us? Right, you're with us? Just maybe unmute. I did. Uh, Wonderful. You, you did, and awesome. we can hear you perfectly. Wonderful. Where are you right now in the U.S.? Knoxville, Tennessee. Tennessee. Beautiful. Yes, right in the background of Oak Ridge National Lab. Fantastic. Right. Are you ready? I'm sure you are ready. You've got your presentation ready, ready. And we're ready to awesome. hear what you have to share. Three minutes over to you. <laughs> Thank you. Can you see my slide? Okay. So my name is Hisham Gosain. I'm the president of Endeavor Composites. We are a non-woven fabric manufacturer providing turnkey solution for the composite industry. As you know, the composite market is on the rise, especially carbon fiber is reaching 120,000 tons uh, a year in demand. But what people don't talk about is that the composite, especially carbon fiber manufacturing is a 70% yield production. So 30% of the production goes to landfill every year, equating 1 billion US dollars in value. A lot of people have tried to approach this problem by milling the fiber, which add no financial or mechanical values, compounding them, which add a lot of energy costs to the process and cause fiber length attrition. And several have tried non-woven because it's appealing to preserving the fiber length retention and low cost of production, but they couldn't pass half, half an inch or 12 millimeter in fiber length. Our patent uh, the process preserve fiber length attrition and intercept those fibers from landfill, create tailored non-wovens with high output, low cost, defect free, and these turnkey preforms can be multifunctional as we can use any sort of fibers with the carbon fiber, adding $15 billion in value. So, the elimination of defect and using long fiber have allowed us to uh, compete in performance by increasing the interlaminar shear by 83% and tensile strength by 52%. Our business model is to st place strategic partnership with carbon fiber OEMs and composite recycler to create these turnkey preforms that fits the composite industry existing equipment in a plug and play system, tailored properties and increase functionality and unlock new potentials. Uh, the market opportunity size currently, if we look at the automotive only, they're consuming $100 million worth of carbon fiber, which will turn into six million, $600 million in revenue in the next three years. So far, we've raised $1 million in non-dilutive funding, thanks to the several agencies in the U.S. government, and we've partnered in R&D with major players in the industry. A big shout out to our board of directors that split between deep expertise in technology commercialization, an angel investor and a VC investor. Last but not least, we have a great engineering team with business background as well that's been a great support. We remain at your disposal for any information and we're looking forward for future strategic partnership and investment opportunities. Hey, Chum. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Over there in Tennessee. Oh, you. You're in Tennessee. Our yeah. jury members are pretty much spread out across Europe. And we're going to hear now exactly how they felt about what you just shared. So I believe right now, Yele is, uh, has a question for you right now. Yeah, thank you. Um, I would like to know and to understand how you derive these uh, longer fibers, because the longer I think the better. Uh, and the second question is, how do you control uh, a defect-free uh, preform? Yes, sir. So uh, our process uh, changed the wet lay performance from everybody has been trying to solve it from a chemistry perspective. We worked more on the mixer side. We created a very unique mixer that controlled the physics aspect of it. And that's what we were able to patent in creating a system that can disperse equally and at a very high speed without subjecting the fibers to very long period of time of currents, which caused, uh, which caused roping defects. 
by shortening the time of mixing and creating a wide distribution. Uh, imagine it as multiple tornadoes hitting each other at once. That's how we were able to spread it much faster. And how do you control a defect free uh, preform? Uh, by completely defilamentizing the toe, we spread the toe to the maximum, so there is no log defects, which is fibers that are undispersed, and we prevent the fibers from having the time to tangle with each other because we move the system extremely fast, and that will prevent any rope defect, which is fibers rolling on themselves and tangling together. Okay, thank you. Just a thank little you. bit more time, 20 seconds, last question perhaps. No, okay, we'll take that as, uh, as the jury is satisfied and they've heard enough to make their own decisions about what they've just thank heard. Hitcham, thank you so much and uh, hopefully, well, we don't know, but uh, maybe we'll see you again tomorrow as one of our winners. So thank you so much. Oh, right, before we go on to our next finalist, uh, so already you've heard that we are naturally here in Paris, in the centre of Paris, in this beautiful, beautiful studio, uh, um, virtual studio. You know where we are, but we would love to know where you are. Let us know in the chat exactly where you are. This morning, literally, we had people from four corners of the globe, Taiwan, Uruguay, South, South America, South Africa, um, Luxembourg, France. We had, them, we had people from everywhere. Let us know where you are and maybe if there's a spe specific startup you're rooting for, let us know. Let us know what you think as well. Right, we move on now to our next finalist of this session, our third finalist, and this is a startup simply called Icomat. They're from the UK and the CEO is about to join us right now, Evangelos Simpeludis. I'm, I'm sure I said that wrong. Did I say that right or wrong? Hello, Peter. No, no, I think it was excellent pronunciation. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Right. Where are you right now in the UK? Uh, Bristol. 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 Right. This is the, the heart we, of the composite. The harp. That's absolutely right. Bristol. Two great football, play, football teams as well. Bristol City and uh, Bristol Rovers. Right. Are you ready? Yes, you are. I'm yes. sure you are. Three minutes is yours. So composite stands for lightweighting, but this is no longer enough. There is now more pressure than ever to deliver even lighter composite structures and produce parts at a lower cost and much higher rates. As you all know, composites are only strong in the fiber direction. And to compensate for this, we stack layers at different orientations, giving the same strength in the main directions. But the structure is never loaded the same in all directions, and it would be far more efficient to steer the fibers and reinforce only the critical areas. This gives us parts which are lighter and require less layers, so they are cheaper and faster to produce. Sadly, this is not possible with existing technologies. Both AFP and 3D printing create severe defects when steering as they buckle the tapes. Steering performance is improved with very narrow tapes, but quality and productivity are much lower. ICOMAT has developed and patented the world's first process that can fiber steer without any defects at all. This is also achievable using very wide tapes and high deposition rates, enabling very low costs and industrial production. Our core product is the RTS tape laying system, and we offer this alongside the necessary software and support, enabling you to go from a design to a complete part. The benefits of RTS are staggering. In aeronautics, one of our programs with Airbus and BAE used one of our heads placed at the NCC to manufacture a lower wing skin panel. Our part was 65% lighter compared to the one used today. And the same panel produced using steering with an AFP leads to severe defects. We have a similar contract with the European Space Agency where we have shown 15% weight saving on a rocket structure. And this saving alone is worth its weight in gold. In automotive, we recently secured a two and a half million contract to set up a pilot line to produce demo parts for Jaguar. To minimize costs, we are enforcing low cost material such as SMC with minimal amount of steered carbon tapes. Also focusing on low cost is a pilot line we are developing with Solvay where steered 2D blanks can be formed rapidly in complex shapes. The market opportunity is substantial across the three sectors and we currently focus on automotive where leading OEMs are in our pipeline for high volume production. 
roughly 40 of our systems would be needed for every 100,000 vehicles. Our team is ready to scale. Our chairman is the ex-CEO of Thales Salenia, and I have spent a decade of my career advancing the field of fiber steering. We have also attracted highly talented technical and business people, and our numbers are growing rapidly. Fiber steering can unlock the potential of composites and drive huge growth for the whole sector. Our vision is to be your partner in delivering this growth. Thank you very much. There we are. Wonderful. Thank you, Seth. Thank you very much as it went to zero. So perfectly timing. So the timing was perfect. But what else is perfect in terms of what the jury think of what you've just shared? So right now, I believe uh, Brian has a question for you. Yeah, thank you. Very interesting presentation. Um, when it comes to the layup process, is it capable of high volume production? What type of speeds uh, are you seeing for the layup? And then I'm also interested in the compatibility of the resin that's used in the layup in automotive applications. So like a compression molding, are there compatibilities? Uh, what type of resins are you using? Yes, excellent. So in automotive, definitely it's capable for high volume production. The pilot line we're setting up aims at 100,000 uh, vehicles per year. The main problem is, is the cost. So as I said, because carbon fiber is expensive, we're using the minimal amount. So to give you an idea, on a one and a half ton vehicle, we're only placing roughly 20 kilos of, of UD reinforcement. So it is compatible. So what we're trying to compete is aluminum casting. So to give you an idea, we're estimating is 30% lighter, 30% stiffer, and cost comparable to aluminum casting. And the process is compatible with commercial off-the-shelf uh, prepreg materials. So we're using standard uh, automotive-grade Snapcure prepreg. Just under Thank a you. minute now for uh, any last questions from our jury members. Anything they're curious about? Okay, I'll t we'll take we'll take that as you're again satisfied and happy with it, uh, with everything you've heard. Thank you so much, Evangelos. Uh, good luck to you. Good luck to to Bristol, and uh, hopefully maybe we'll see you as a as a, as a winner tomorrow afternoon. Thank you so much. <laughs> right, uh, a quick shout out. <coughs> Excuse me. A quick shout out to those that told us exactly where they are. So, Canada, hello there, welcome. Indianapolis, we have people from Russia, I believe, from Washington, D.C. And we have people from as far as Normandy as well, and even Lille. So, well done, well done on win winning the championship here in France. Right, we move, but we got, again, if you haven't let us know, let us know. We want to know where you are in the world. Right, we move on to our next finalist, our fourth finalist of 10. This is actually um, Radi Surf, Radi Surf, and they are from Denmark. So we, we, I believe we're moving right over to Denmark right now. And Mikael Konsfeldt, the CEO, is ready and waiting. Hello. I am. Hello. Wonderful. Are you, where are you in Denmark right now? We are in Aarhus in Denmark. Wonderful. I have no idea where that is, but I, I'm sure I'm sure it is in Denmark. And uh, and you're ready. You're ready with your presentation, and you're ready to share with us exactly why you feel you should be in this top twenty. Over to you. Thank you very much. As mentioned, my name is Mickey Kongsvold. I'm CEO and co-founder of Redisurf. And first, I want you to look at this picture of a highly advanced and automated assembly line. This is what we could call the 21st century assembly lines. But if you look beyond the robots here, we'll see that we're still using 20th century adhesion technology. And the result is that we're creating unsustainable products in an inefficient way using harmful chemistry. But more importantly, we're designing products that are not fit for the future circular economy. And we are creating a barrier for mass utilization of advanced thermoplastic material and thermoplastic composites. So we want to think, use the thing away from using pure metals or the current fiber-based materials that are not recyclable and use much more thermo, advanced thermoplastics and thermoplastic composites. And our solution to do that is to enable bonding between these materials using polymer brushes, essentially nanometer polymer chains that are chemically anchored to a surface, forming sort of like a nano velcro structure on the surface. And we are able to grow these polymer brushes on almost any surface and adapt them to a thermoplastic material that essentially allows you to weld the thermoplastic material directly to the base material, achieving a strong and tight bonding in an even reversible process. 
And you can use traditional production technologies like over molding of your base part or welding of your material and create superior strength. And it's a solution that fits well into some of the major markets, automotive, aerospace and energy, who needs the unique selling points that our technology brings. And we are working closely with our customers to adapt our technology to their specific needs. And we are ready to deliver the production setup they need and the chemistry they need in a simple process that scales easily globally. We are, have a unique opportunity to make the world greener using materials that are actually recyclable, something that fits directly into some of the mega trends like light weighting and sustainable energy with a material that's already recyclable. We are on a step-by-step -step milestone plan where we launched the first unique product with some of our customers in 2018, and we plan to have the first industrial production plant ready by next year. We have the unique technical team behind this, but also the added business competences, a strong business-oriented board, and a strong technical founder team. And we already received global recognition for our technology through major investments, important soft funding, including strategic investment from the European Commission, and we received awards for our technology every single year since founding the company in 2015. I hope to, to achieve some strategic, more strategic partnerships after this today. And thank you very much for listening. Mikael, thank you so much for sharing your big idea with us today. So let's move straight over to our jury members. And I believe Carl Hines has a question ready and waiting. Yes, I have one question for you. Um, you know, we are using bonding technologies uh, not only to join dissimilar materials, it's also an important uh, technology to increase stiffness. Uh, so can you tell me about your uh, stiffness performance you can achieve your technology in comparison yeah, so to the standard uh, bonding technologies? Yeah, so essentially what we create here is a direct bonding between the materials. So if you're creating hybrid materials essentially from metal and composites, you have a direct bonding and therefore a very stiff, uh, stiff bonding between your materials. But our material does not add stiffness on its own, so you need to have that in your structural component. Thank you. Still uh, a little bit of time left control, for... Uh, how do you control a bond line? And, excuse me? How do you control this bond line? The, between the materials? Um, yeah, essentially, sure. yeah, it depends a lot on the specific product, but essentially what we do is we coat, if you take a metal and a thermoplastic, a hybrid material you're creating, uh, we're coating the metal part, and then you need to weld your, your plastic, thermoplastic part on top of that. I believe you also saw a startup earlier this morning doing welding of thermoplastics. Our solution would allow you to use that kind of welding, other kind of welding techniques, and create that strong bond line between, between the materials. Mikael, thank you so much. Wonderful to hear your big idea, and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll hear your destiny in this competition um, tomorrow afternoon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Right. Again, remember, we're looking for three. If you've just joined us, this is the Startup Booster competition. We heard this morning 10 big ideas. We're listening to another 10 big ideas right now. Innovation within the composite industry. And we are looking for three winners, just three winners, equal winners that will walk away winners of this competition. But here's the thing. These are 20, 20 of the best startups out of more than 200 across 30. 30 countries. So you hear something you're curious about, you hear something you like, or maybe something that in that your network, somebody in your network might like to hear, join them over at the Startup Booster Village at the Digital Trade Show, and you can connect with them, talk to them, start up a conversation. Even if you're skeptical about some of the ideas, start a conversation because you never know. A conversation here might actually blossom and become something stronger and uh, even fruitful in the future. Let's move on now to our next startup. We are already on the fifth startup already hearing these, these great ideas this afternoon. We move over once again, another long haul flight from Denmark, Europe. We go across the Atlantic and we're back in the USA because we've got steelhead, steelhead composites and I believe Andrew Kors 
is ready and waiting. Andrew, are you there? Yes, thank you very much. Fantastic. Andrew, where are you in the US right now? We are in sunny Golden, Colorado. Sunny golden, sunny golden Colorado. That I mean, listen, here right in Paris, those of you that are in Paris will know right now, it's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful hot weather. So we can feel, we're almost like, almost in the same place. Right. <laughs> are you ready? Yes, you are. Your presentation's ready. You're ready to share your, your big idea. Three minutes. Over to you. Thank you so much. This has been a, a very interesting uh, last year. We were supposed to uh, be presenting uh, this time last year, but lots has happened since then. In particular, we've had uh, some very exciting news, especially on the uh, on one of these mega trends that we have ended up right in the middle of, and that's in hydrogen. So, with the new European Green Deal coming online, and the massive investments in Europe as well as in other other countries across the globe, uh, hydrogen has gone from a an idea that has been five or 10 years out until something that is happening right now, with Goldman Sachs calling it a investment opportunity that is in excess of $10 trillion by 2050, and Bank of America calling it the best investment opportunity since the semiconductor. So how does steel have fit into this and how do composites fill into this? Storing this massive amount of generated hydrogen is going to be a big challenge. And composite pressure vessels can be a cost-effective bulk storage solution, but with some caveats we need to make the tanks smarter. One of the benefits of composites is that we can have two materials. We have a liner, we have an outer shell. We can embed telematics. Steelhead has been developing technology for implementing smart tanks. These are tanks that have embedded, embedded health monitoring and allow us to control, like in a battery, where we have things like bad cells. The opportunity is to, to increase the utilization of composite pressure vessels to store the massive amount of hydrogen that we see coming online. Even without this technology, the, the market is expected to be over $3 billion, growing from $200 million today by 2026. And we can exceed this by having better tanks. We can have tanks that have a reduction of safety factor without reducing safety by embedding these telematics and making them safe tanks. We have taken our technology, we currently design, engineer, manufacture, test, and certify tanks that we sell to a global audience of some of the best companies, the most discerning companies across the planet. We have the traction already, we have the manufacturing capability, and we have the technology and the team to pull it off. With, the, uh, with over 70 years of composite pressure vessel manufacturing in our facilities in Colorado, we have uh, the who's who of automation, of composite ves pressure vessel design and engineering, and a, a world-class team. And we would love to work with, with any of you to help expand what we're doing at Steelhead. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Let's hear from our jury straight away about what, how they felt about what you've just shared. And I believe Brian has a question for you right now, Andrew. A uh, question, you referenced the uh, safety factor. What is a typical safety factor today? And then with your telematics, uh, what could that be reduced to? What kind of a benefit do you see there? The current safety factor for on-road is about 2.25 times burst factor o o over operating pressure. And for, for stationary or gas transport is 3x. And we believe we can get that down safely to a 1.75, which would reduce the uh, the amount of carbon fiber by about a half of what we're using right now and allow us to cost competitively compete with alternative materials such as stainless steels. Thank you, Andrew. Okay, another question perhaps? Yes, I, I have a question. It's, uh, if, uh, if we talk about the technology, so it, that there's a lot going on uh, on this space and on hydrogen storage. And, uh, and, and my question for you is what makes your technology unique compared to what exists? The, the uniqueness of our technology is that we have it uh, we have it implemented. We have certified hydrogen storage solutions that are that are in use in aerospace, in marine, in stationary, and transport. And we have demonstrated that we can monitor the health of a vessel through two different programs by embedding the the, uh, the sensors between the, the the liner and the carbon fiber, and that puts us in pretty rarefied company. Wonderful, Andrew. Thank you so much.
for sharing your, your, your big idea, sharing, uh, sharing uh, your concept, and uh, good luck with that. And we'll see where that actually goes to in the future. Thank you so much. From sunny Colorado as well. Right. It's time to go on to our next finalist. But remember this, we're already halfway through. So we've already heard five. A tough decision. Definitely a very tough choice for our jury members. But here's the thing. If I ask you right now... The, the, the finalists you've heard, if you had to pick a winner right now, who would you pick? Let us know in the chat. Let us know exactly what you think or who you think should walk away a winner if, if you had to choose. If you were in the driving seat and actually had the authority to choose. You don't. Our jury do. But we'd love to hear what you think. We move on now to our next finalist of this session, which is, in fact, again, we actually don't go anywhere from the, in the U.S. We stay in the U.S. because we're going to hear elemental coatings and I believe Brian Huskinson is there, ready and waiting. Brian, are you there? I am, yeah. Wonderful. Where, where are you, Brian? Where in the U.S. are you right now? We're in uh, Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas, right. Houston, Texas, Texas. We're here in Paris. Everyone else is around the world. You've heard where they are. So it's, it's a global viewing and a global uh, view, um, listening of your pitch. So three minutes over to you. Great. Um, well, my name is Brian Huskinson. I'm the CEO of Elemental Coatings, and we're a company devoted to solving problems caused by ice and scale. Um, just to put some numbers around the, the scope of the issue here, every time a, a large passenger jet's de-iced, it costs $13,000. Global annual spend on de-icing fluids exceeds $800 million annually, and that's just on the fluids. It's not on the equipment, not on labor, not on whatever cost you would assign to uh, you know, frustrated and, and delayed passengers. Um, there's over 10 million megawatt hours of lost energy production in the wind uh, energy space as turbines need to be shut down or curtailed uh, to prevent damage due to ice buildup on the blades. This not only costs operators over a billion dollars a year, but it puts many millions of tons of extra CO2 into the atmosphere. There are also, just in the U.S. alone, um, over 20,000 slip and fall injuries annually uh, caused by ice uh, that lead to lost work days. And then these claims each individually cost uh, many tens of thousands of dollars. On the whole, we uh, believe there's a, a three plus billion dollar addressable market across various sectors of the economy. So sorry, my uh, slide thing went away here. How do we solve this problem? Uh, simply put, we make it difficult for uh, ice to stick to surfaces. So um, we have a passive coating. It looks, feels, and functions like a normal paint. Um, hopefully you can see a video here start playing on, on the right-hand side of the screen. Um, this middle step has been treated with our coating, and you'll see how easy it is to remove the ice. This is a polyurethane-based chemistry. It's compatible with existing spray equipment, um, and we do have the IP license exclusively from the University of Houston. I uh, want to show another example of our coating in action. This is a partnership we have on the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter. Again, I'll get a video going here. Top uh, blade is coated with our technology, bottoms uncoated. Um, this is sped up, of course, from real time. But you'll see the, the difference in the frequency and extent of the ice shedding events in this icing wind tunnel test. Overall, a 4x reduction in the ice buildup. So um, just a little bit about where we are and where we're headed. Um, I mentioned the, the F-35 work. We also have some active collaborations with Boeing around the B-52 and some rotor craft. Um, we have passed rain erosion tests, which I believe we are the only anti-icing coating to have done this. Um, we've also been very su successful in raising non-dilutive funding. Next steps, we're, we're currently raising money to expand our, our offerings and continue our product development. And just one final note about the team. You can see me there on the left. Uh, spent five years at McKinsey, uh, did a PhD in applied physics at Harvard and our CTO, actually co-inventor of the technology, is a faculty member at the University of Houston. So with that, I'll pause and think question, take questions. Thank Wonderful. You. And, uh, and with that, you've come to right at the end of your time, right on the dot. Right. Let's move over to our jury members and uh, hear what they have to say. And I believe Yele has a question. Yeah, thank you, Brian. Um, what is the durability of your material? Um, how 
could you understand erosion? So if I think, uh, so I'm from Airbus, so uh, if we coded with your material, um, how, how do you withstand the um, erosion um, resistance? And um, what is actually a kind of a disadvantage if you think of the aviation industry of your material? Yeah, so in, in terms of durability, it's it's obviously application dependent. Our the <clears throat> primary testing we've been doing um, is ha has actually primarily been focused on on hitting some of the the DoD uh, mill specs. So specifically, there's some there's some eight mill pref eight five two eight five top coat spec, and so we're well on our way to to getting our our coating qualified towards that spec. And obviously, as part of that, you have to hit all the durability uh, requirements for for the specification so um but it, it really depends on on the application and which parts you're looking at if you're looking at leading edges or uh horizontal wing surfaces or or sensors um so can't provide a universal answer but i will say that um, we have passed some of the uh the intercode adhesion uh rain erosion tests um and we we do expect to be able to uh to hit all of the the mill press specs that are that are needed for at least dod applications Another, another 30 seconds on the clock. Any last questions? Yeah. Um, did you do any experiments if your uh, coding also would help to save fuel? Um, so from an aerodynamic standpoint, there um, our, our coding performs, uh, and we've basically benchmarked against the existing coding, so we're not trying to outperform from a, a pure aerodynamic standpoint. Now, if you look at just having less ice buildup, obviously that affects the aerodynamics and therefore the fuel efficiency. Um, I don't have any um, kind of at scale or, or good pilot level data uh, to indicate, uh, you know, the extent of the savings I'm outside have, beyond. I'm just going to have uh, to stop you there. I only, only because of time, only because of time to be fair and square, okay? Uh, but wonderful. Yep. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing and uh, good luck. And again, maybe, maybe, just maybe, we'll see you tomorrow as one of our three winners of the Startup Booster Competition 2021. Right, moving on. We move on now to our next finalist of the 10. Already on number seven, we're in America at the moment. Well, we've just been to America, Houston. We get, get on a plane and we cross the Atlantic and we find ourselves in... La France, somewhere where I feel, I can just feel the next person is, is very close, in fact. I might be wrong, but I feel he's close. Marco Cavallari. Marco, are you there? <laughs> so close, yet so far. <laughs> Marco, are you there? I can... In, in France, we're in France, probably, probably... He's in Paris, maybe he's probably next door, perhaps. <laughs> OK, what we'll do, a couple more seconds before we move on, perhaps, to our next finalist. OK, what we're going to do, uh, what we'll do, Marco, if, uh, if Marco joins us a little bit later on, we'll try and squeeze him in towards, uh, towards the end. But what we'll do right now is move on to our next finalist. So jury members, just make a note of this. We're moving on to our next finalist, uh, our eighth finalist. And this is uh, Weave 3D from the US, Weave 3D, and I believe we have, hopefully, Chris Christopher Oberst on the line. Christopher, are you with us? Maybe Christopher and uh, Marco, maybe, they have, maybe they're on a, on a Zoom call together right now, perhaps. <laughs> okay. Christoph, are you there? Are you coming through? OK, what we'll do, what we're going to try and do now, again, we're going to try and get through to uh, Christopher uh, coming through right now from, uh, from the US, if you're with us. OK, what I'm going to do right now, again, clearly there's a, a little bit of a, a technical problem here that we've got, that we're, we're dealing with as we speak, as, as this goes on now. I'm just going to now consult quickly with my team. How are we doing? Do you, will we be able to maybe go to our next finalist? I think we have somebody coming through. I can feel, I can feel it. But I cannot hear you. <laughs> no, I can Marco. see you moving. Hello. I can see you smiling, which is beautiful. Can you hear me? 
Yes. Wonderful. Marika, no, I can't hear you. you don't know how it feels for me to really see you right now. I, mean, I feel I've been waiting an, an, an entire day to see you. Marika, you're in France right now. Where are you? South of Paris, Paris-Saclay. Okay. Orsay is the name of the city. Wonderful. That sounds sounds beautiful. Right. <laughs> we're very close, in fact. It is. But our technical Definitely. technical issues so far apart. But anyway, I think we're okay now. You have three minutes. You know what you have to do, and you know how to do it. Over to you. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm very excited to present our company and our technology for revealing the invisible during the production cycle time. Why is this important? First, many industries, like transportation, use lighter and lighter components to reduce the carbon footprint and to support their electrification. Second, there are big expectations on quality for the zero for the reduction of the cost of poor quality. On average, these costs account to 5% of the company's revenues, according to the French normalization body, AFNOR. This is huge. For these reasons, there is a growing need for quality and process control solutions, which can be directly deployed on the production line. They need to be penetrating, contactless, harmless, and rapid. But current solutions do not satisfy all these requirements simultaneously. For example, X-ray computed tomography cannot do in eye control because it takes tens of minutes, and it is hazardous, which doesn't help. That's why we offer to the market our game-changing non-destructive testing solution based on ultra-fast terahertz pulses. It is fully automated and it uses a patenting detector which is 10 million times faster than the state of the art. This is our key technical differentiator and it allows our technology to be directly deployed on a production line to do dimensional control and defect detection. For example, it can detect voids, delaminations, inclusions, fiber waviness, and other defects in composites. It can control a glue bead or a wet line in assembled parts. It can also characterize a coating, either monolayer or multilayer. We address a broad market estimated to be worth 750 million per year and growing at a rate of 7%. We offer lab services, on-site inspections, and the sale of automated systems available through channels for a worldwide coverage. Our ambition is to be the European leader in our segment, in our segment by 2023. We are four years old and we have traction. We have a distributor for plastic injection molding market, seed fund with, with Socomore, and also we have done many POCs. We progress rapidly because we have we leverage on 10 years of academic research and because we leverage on a strong team with six people. Collectively, we have 50 years of collective experience in technology and business developments. What I expect from this event is to meet customers and investors for our next funding round. Thank you. Marco Cavallari, Marco Cavallari, we got you back in the end and you didn't, you, you didn't disappoint. You shared your big idea with us. Right now, we're going over to our jury members once again and uh, hear how they felt about what they've just heard. And I believe Marcus has a question right now. Um, so I understand it's a uh, it's a service business model that you're offering. It's it's not a um, is it or is it a software solution? Can you maybe explain again the business model? Yes. Yeah, so we offer systems to do the control, and we also offer the service for the companies which are interested in services as opposed to uh, purchasing a system. And these uh, services are also helpful to set up new processes, for example. But we do okay. offer a full system, which is hardware and software. Got another 60 seconds on the clock for any last questions, perhaps. Oh, I'll ask a question, Brian. Um, you mentioned coding, so we're looking at film build measurements, things like that from a terahertz perspective. From a composites perspective, composites uh, directly, what, what type of benefits do you see there using the, the terahertz method? Faster. 
Uh, we can analyze uh, stratified materials. We can see the laminations, for example. We can say at which depth it is located. We can characterize it. Um, we can also analyze composites uh, like uh, honeycombs, where other technologies like ultrasounds struggle because they do not propagate in uh, air. So we can address uh, this multitude of <laughs> We can also follow in-time processes. Uh, we can characterize tapes. So when you manufacture a tape, you can control the thickness, uh, density variations, fiber waviness, uh, and the tape deposition, like automated tape deposition. So there are many applications of our technology. Thank you. Wonderful. Uh, there's a little bit of time now. Last, last quick question from somebody, perhaps. Yeah, what, it, what is the main differentiation between uh, your solution and the ultrasonic state-of-the-art technology? Well, we use terahertz, which is electromagnetic waves. They use sound. And our technology allows to uh, go through porous media, uh, like a foams, uh, whereas uh, ultrasounds cannot do. We have a very good resolution. Our uh, systems are very easy to use, and they are contactless which is very uh, useful in many applications where you don't want to have a contact medium. Okay, I understood. Yeah, understood. Marco, yes. wonderful. <coughs> Excuse me. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And uh, let's see if, uh, if, you, if you end up one of the three winners of the competition. Thank you so much. Thank you. Right. We move on swiftly to our next finalist. You heard his name earlier on as we were trying to find, uh, trying to find him uh, as we had a few technical dif difficulties. They are sorted now. They are all, it, everything is good. So hopefully we have Christopher Oberst on the line from uh, Weave 3D in the US. Is that right? Yes, thank you, Peter. Wonderful, fantastic. Where are you right now, by the way? We are in Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, Atlanta, Georgia, wonderful. How's the, what's the weather like there? <laughs> Very I... hot and humid. It, seemed, it seems to be hot everywhere, unless those of you that are looking in on this, wherever you, if you've got really awful weather, let us know. <laughs> Just let us know if you've got the worst. We want to know who has the worst weather on the planet right now. Right. Christopher, you're ready. I'm sure you, you, you know what you have to do. You've got three minutes and it's all yours. Thank you, Peter. So Weave 3D is a uh, manufacturing startup that spun out of Georgia Tech back in 2017 to commercialize an advanced composite manufacturing technology that I invented as part of my PhD. So we're specifically addressing one of the challenges that is uh, namely traditional composite forming processes were really developed for aerospace and sporting goods levels of production volumes and performance criteria. So this has left um, high volume, cost sensitive uh, mass market applications like automotive, uh, largely underserved by these traditional processes. Um, and Weave3D provides a uh, processed cost solution that makes uh, composite manufacturing cost effective and scalable for these types of applications. So we do this through a unique rebar for plastics design approach. Um, using a proprietary composite forming technology that we developed, we convert uh, commercially available thermoplastic unidirectional tapes into a woven consolidated composite lattice structure that we then sell to a plastic molder. Um, so this would be in, uh, to be combined with something like thermoforming, compression molding, or injection molding, and the resultant lightweight structural composite part, which contains both a continuous reinforcement from the lattice as well as the molded plastic, enables uh, a, a, a solution that is a fraction of the cost of a traditional laminate-based approach. Slides have died for a second here. There we go. Um, so we have a full-scale pilot machine capable of forming lattices up to 1.5 meters wide in a high-throughput, uh, continuous roll-to-roll -roll or roll-to-sheet production process. And we can, uh, as part of this process, do on-the-fly variation of lattice density and tape materials to optimize this structure uh, and tune it to uh, really um, match performance requirements locally within the part. Um, so local variation of density and local variation of tape materials allows us to really reduce the overall part cost, while at the same time, this lattice format enables a handleable and co-formable uh, solution for um, secondary molding with you know, injection molding, compression molding, and allows this whole process to achieve very low cycle times. 
Um, compared to other composite forming processes on the market today, we're able to achieve equivalent performance um, at a, a much reduced cost relative to stuff like hand layup, resin transfer molding, or thermoplastic automotive fiber placement. Uh, and our, our technology is not just limited to structural reinforcement. We can also add functionality to these composites by integrating transmission materials. So the resultant plastic part can have uh, power transmission, data transmission, or thermal heat sinking capabilities built into the, the structure. Um, and then looking at our markets, we're specifically focused on automotive exteriors and interiors, um, body and white closures, interior panels. Um, and we have a fantastic team with a background in um, operations and sales as well I'm as a broad. I'm going to have to stop you there, Christopher. I'm, I'm sure I know, you're coming to, <laughs> I know you're on the last slide, just making it um, completely fair for absolutely everybody. And you are, you are almost there. Right. We move over to our, to our um, jury members and let's hear how they felt about what they've just heard. So I believe, uh, Carl Hines, you've got a question. Hi, thank you for this nice presentation. Uh, my question looks as following. Uh, did you investigate also any recycling concepts for your structure? Yes, so because we use thermoplastic uh, tapes as our, as our feedstock, the trim scrap that's generated during the tape production can actually be recycled and used as part of that secondary overmolding process. Um, we also have done several projects already where our lattice is being used in combination with either a recycled feedstock, uh, like recycled carbon fiber, or being used in combination with a natural fiber reinforcement. Um, and the combination of those two materials, lattice plus this second material, allows us to significantly enhance the performance of those recycled or natural materials to make them uh, equivalent or better than the, a virgin material uh, or, or a virgin engineered material. Thank you. Still, we've still got another 30 seconds on the clock. Any last questions, perhaps, for Christopher? No? Okay. So, Sorry? No, just a real quick question. As far as the, the handleability of the lattice after it's produced, what, is it, what does that look like? So the, the lattice is semi-rigid um, in, its, in its produced state um, because of the bonding of all the lattice structures. So even at very low density, it can be lifted. Um, and then once you've heated it for a preforming process, then it becomes drapeable again. Um, so if you, if you needed to form a complex shape, heating it and then forming it uh, allows you to do that. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank <clears throat> Christopher, thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing uh, your big idea. And we'll find out how big it actually is. In, in the minds of the jury, that's right, in the minds of the jury, in fact, tomorrow when we uh, reveal who those well-deserved winners actually are. So thank you so much, Christopher. Right, we move across now to our next finalist. We were in, uh, I can't, where were we? We were in the USA, then we moved to France, and then we moved back to the USA. Guess where we're going now? That's right. La France. We're back to France, back to where it, where it's all happening, back to where we are right now. I can feel this person is very close indeed. This is a startup called Yuyo, Yuyo, and I believe Romain Paul is, is ready and waiting. Romain, are you there? Yes, I am. Can you see me? Can you hear me? I can see you. I can hear you. I can almost feel you. Where are you in France? I'm in the south of France in Montpellier. Montpellier. Only I, I can't see okay. you. I, I don't see your screen. Since the cut, I, I don't see the. So I, I'm not saying what's going on with the slides or whatever, but I, I can do this on, on on my side. I don't know. I try to do it if there's no solution, but I I I don't see you. Okay, Roman, can you hear me? I can hear you. Uh, can you just, see me? I don't see you. But you it's it's. It, we'll do this. Uh, just let me know when it starts, and uh, okay. we'll. We'll do this like that. <laughs> okay. Montpellier. So, beautiful. It must be beautiful there in Montpellier at the moment. Right. What we're doing now, yes. we're trying to fix that for you right now. Can What can you see on your screen now? Are we there? No, but um, I mean, it's okay. We, we, we can do this. with. Oh, I don't see you, but... Uh, I can see your screen now, and I believe everybody else can see your presentation. Can you see your own presentation? No. But uh, I have it on my own, so I can. Uh, okay, I can. Let's, do, uh, let's go with that then. Remote. We can see it. We can see it. We can hear you. We can see you. We'd love to hear your three minutes. Go for it. Okay. So, uh, well, they, let me, just give me a second. It's, uh, it's to pin it. Okay. Um, so I'm happy to present uh, you, you. So 
At EUOS, um, we're dedicated to rethink completely the way surfboards are built. Why so? Because we've been making uh, uh, surfboards uh, in the traditional way for uh, about 10 years, and we experienced the, the, what we call the surfer's paradox, which is uh, the contradiction between the, our uh, eco-friendly mindsets and the toxicity of the equipment uh, that we use and we, that we built. So um, uh, <clears throat> our, um, our goal is to try and make uh, the process of making a surfboard and the product in itself uh, more sustainable uh, so that it can uh, match uh, the way we, we live. Uh, <clears throat> how do we do it? Uh, so our um, recipe uh, is articulated uh, uh, with two uh, main um, elements, uh, large format uh, 3D printing and uh, biocomposite uh, materials. So uh, we, we replace the polyurethane or polystyrene uh, foam that usually is inside a surfboard by a hollow structure that we 3D print with recycled uh, PET, and then we laminate this with uh, basalt fiber and uh, bio-epoxy uh, resin. So we make uh, performance surfboards that uh, help uh, preserve uh, uh, marine ecosystems. And then uh, <clears throat> our uh, process goes uh, uh, beyond that because we discovered that thanks to this additive manufacturing process, uh, we can choose where we put uh, the, the material and where we take it off so uh, we can go further in terms of uh, search for performance and as well in terms of uh, ultra customization. Uh, and on the whole, we're trying to show that uh, there can be another uh, surfing industry that is not only uh, fun, uh, hedonism and, and uh, good looking girls, you know, that there's something a little bit more, more thoughtful and uh, sustainable. Uh, so we are very happy to see all those uh, new uh, developments in, in the composite industry and in combining additive manufacturing with um, composite um, industry because this is what our process is is all about. Uh, so we've been uh, uh, working uh, for the last five, six years in R&D with uh, uh, search labs and uh, to, to find out a recipe, but we continue uh, improving uh, what we do to try and make every board more performant and more sustainable than the, the previous one. So thank you for uh, having us here, and uh, we would be happy to to meet uh, really the the people that we we heard uh, uh, during this uh, time and presentations because uh, there's a lot of things that we are really interested into. So uh, thank you very much, and we are open for questions. I'm sorry it's been a bit messy at the beginning, but that's okay. <laughs> so fine, Roma, Roma, fantastic, in Montpellier, fantastic. We you you got through it and you shared your idea in the best way you know how and, and, uh, and very bold and uh, informative. Right, we move on now to our jury members and uh, we let them now sh ask you the questions they need to ask to d dig a little bit deeper about the idea. And I believe Thomas has a question for you right now. Yeah, so thank you very much, Roma. And uh, so any, uh, any information about the size of the market? Uh, it's, um... It's a bit. It's difficult to say, but uh, um, uh, we 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 have a figure. It's about four hundred thousand uh, surfboards sold uh, per year um, in Europe. So this is the market we we target. And uh, in this market, there's uh, on on the custom uh, parts that this is the one that we address uh, represent uh, one fourth of the market roughly. The rest is, uh, is uh, made in Siri and uh, Southeast Asia. Thank 60 you. seconds on the clock. 60 seconds, another question for Roma, maybe. Yeah, maybe, maybe from my side. Do you, do you have any IP protection? Because there's, um, you probably know, there's competition also from France, people trying to do the same uh, at the same time. So um, how, how can you protect your um, IP or, or how do you position yourself in terms of uh, the competition that is also out there? We're trying to be the first. Uh, this is what we've always been doing. We try to pioneer the things. So we have a lot of problems coming in that we discover, but we try to be the first. Now we just received some new machines that, uh, that uh, with an extruder so that we're, gonna, we're starting to make uh, filaments out of plastic trash that we collect locally. 
Um, and so we're moving uh, like this. So we don't have any any uh, patent or stuff like this. For us, it's it's none of our really business. We, we consider that now uh, the, the really value added that you bring to a market is being the first to do the things because otherwise information, you can get it wherever you want. I mean, we cannot uh, ban anyone to to 3d print surfboards or to use biocomposite materials so we just try and source the best bioresin we can try and find the best fibers the best processes and and move fast and this is what we, we, we're doing fast and transparency we have nothing to 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 hide we, we uh, invite a, 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 anyone who wants to see what we do and how we do it so but we we try and move fast and be the first to do the things so it's maybe be wrong, but it's it's been working so far. Okay, it might be wrong, it. but it's been working so far. I love that, I love that phrase, and we'll see how how it's going to work in the future. Maybe working for you tomorrow, Roma in uh, Montpellier. Thank you so much, and uh, and good luck. Thank you. Wow, we are already, guess what, already on number 10. We're on our final finalist of, uh, of this session, and in fact, number 20 of the whole two sessions. So we've already listened to, throughout the day, this morning and now, 19 different big ideas. And right now, we're going to hear number 20. And that number 20 is in a, in a country not too far away from France, a little bit smaller, probably the smallest country of, of all the countries we've been to today. But will it be the country with the biggest impact? We'll have to, we'll have to find out. So we move over to Luxembourg. So it feels like Eurovision when I say that. Over to Luxembourg. And I believe we have Mark Jacobs on the line with us. Mark, are you there? You are there. I can, I can see you looking great. Oh, no. And now I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you perfectly. Fantastic. Mark, where, where are you in Luxembourg? I'm prob probably just in Luxembourg. But the thing is, are you ready? Yes, you are. Your presentation is ready and we're ready to hear what you have to say. So three minutes over to you. Fantastic. Thank you. So my name is Mark Jacobs. I'm CEO of Molecular Plasma Group. And um, I'm here to introduce our molecular grip technology. Because in the end, composites, it's all about bonding the similar materials together. And that is what we enable. So if you think about a couple of major industry challenges, one of them is using highly inert or sensitive materials. Think about polypropylene, PLA, Teflon, ETFE, and so on and so on and so on. Another one is in order to prepare surfaces of many of these materials, you need a lot of solvents, so you have EHS concerns. And uh, from a process perspective, very often you have a very limited open time. How do we solve all that? We have an, an atmospheric plasma technology, which is very different from anything you know in the market. And the main difference is that um, we are able to introduce organic chemistry in the plasma and use the plasma as a vector to bond organic chemistry to any surface. What does that help? What does that do? It results in a permanent modification of the surface. Again, any surface. It's a single step process. It uses no solvents. And just to give you an idea of the types of chemistries we can use, and this is just an idea, um, it's a very wide range. And we even go in other industries up to biomolecules. From a uh, layout perspective, so on the left side, you see our plasma spot, which is a, a spot-like, a, a torch-like uh, layout on the right. You see the same concept, but linear. So this allows us to scale to whichever width you might want to use, depending on your application. So with that, we tick the box. We can do all these difficult and sensitive materials. We tick the box on the uh, health concerns because we actually have a hundred times reduction in the use of chemistry. And on the open time, we, we can achieve a hundred times improvement on the open time, allowing um, completely different manufacturing processes. So tick, tick, tick in each of the boxes. Um, just a few examples of commercial solutions. So you can put our technology on a robot, integrate it into a manufacturing line. You have standalone systems. So you see a larger width system. And we can even treat powders and particles. So imagine the scope of stuff that you can do with this technology. Our business model is we start with application development services because customers always come with very difficult applications to us. When it's easy, you don't need us. Those after development transmit into equipment sales, followed by um, cartridge uh, consumable contracts and maintenance contracts, 
And from a financial perspective, you can see that we have traction. We have a highly qualified team. You can, uh, at the top, you see our team of um, uh, super smart scientists. And at the bottom, it's the business team that brings together a lot of experience. Just a few names. There's a whole bunch of people I can't mention, but you see very familiar names there. Those are quite good references. And in conclusion, we have a disruptive, hang on, easily scalable, competitive manufacturing technology that can bring a lot of value to the composites market. So talk to us, see how we can help you. Mark, wonderful, on time, fantastic, bold, straight to the point and very clear. Indeed, let's hear from our jury members about what they've just heard. And I believe, Marcus, you have a question for Mark. Not yet, maybe later, maybe uh, somebody else <laughs> wants to jump in. <laughs> okay, open it up to our jury members who would like to ask the first question. I have one. So uh, when it comes to the scale up of this technology, so if you go big, so what will be uh, your eventual difficulties to scale it up? Um, none really. So far, we, we now have uh, here we have a 40 centimeter pilot line. We have a next pilot line in, and actually 40 centimeters for industrial in the market. We're now scaling to 1.6 meters, but there's no inherent limitation to go to two, three, four, five meters. We can we can do anything. I'd say that's just engineering. Okay, thank you. Got another. We have uh, another 60 seconds on the clock. So any yeah, last questions? I, any? Yep. Yeah. So Mark, um, you mentioned an open time of weeks. It's yes. quite difficult to. I mean, it's 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 wonderful. Um, if you think of a composite, let's say uh, the composite that we're using in, in the aviation industry, is it that you could have open times of weeks with that technology? Yes, yes, it is. There, there's, in, in the end, what we do is we graft a functional group onto the surface that then in the later stage bonds to something. And if you choose, obviously, depending on which chemistry you, you choose, uh, if if uh, it can have an open time of up to up to a year, we had applications on on ETFE, for instance, where we demonstrated an open time of up to a year. Up to to that time for a bonding, or uh, I mean, for bonding. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. So we functionalized ETFE surface to then bond with a glue system onto something, and that the time between our treatment and the actual bonding operation, one year, still fully functional. Right, that's where we'll wrap up uh, the question and answer session uh, with uh, Molochia Plasma Group from Luxembourg. Mark, thank you so much. Uh, good luck. And maybe, just maybe, we'll see you as a winner tomorrow afternoon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wonderful. Right, ladies and gentlemen, we have now, believe it or not, we've come to the end of this session and the end of the two sessions, the, the Startup Booster Competition 2021. What happens now is, very simply, our jury members, very shortly, they will join, uh, they'll be joining Benjamin, part of our uh, Jack team uh, um, uh, staff here and he will be running running this uh, this competition and together they will put their no, they won't put their heads together literally but they will sit down and they will evaluate every single a startup they've heard, every single big idea, and then this evening at some stage, they will know who the lucky three well-deserved winners are. Tomorrow at 2.30, everybody else will know, and I'll be sharing at the award ceremony who those three lucky winners are. Remember, they walk away with 3,500 euros in, uh, in a financial prize, together with a fully equipped booth at Jack World 2022 right here in Paris next year, which again, it's not all, it's not all about the money, but, but I would say certainly all about the connections, the exposure and the, the, the conversations that you can certainly have at Jack World 2022. All that leaves me now to say is those of you that joined us, thank you so much. You could be doing, and, and you know this better than me, around the world, you could be doing so many other things right now, but you decided to share your hour with us. Our jury members as well, a big, big thank you to our five 
jury members from this morning and now as well, who again gave up their time, gave up their knowledge to, uh, to help us decide who those lucky winners are as well. So all that leaves me now to say is join me tomorrow at 2.30 for the award ceremony. And remember, just before that, we'll be hearing from a, 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 an exceptional keynote, a gentleman. Now, if you're from France, you'll know exactly who he is. If not, you'll, you'll, you would probably have heard of the flying man from Marseille. He will be sharing with us all about his journey, how he can fly, how he flies in a jetpack, and some of the some of the new things he's doing as well. That's all tomorrow. Join me back here, two thirty, and I'm, I'm going to join everybody back now. All the pitchers, all our startups, all our jury members for one last wave. Thank you so much, and we'll see you tomorrow.